questions I'd be happy to answer. Um, but again, please remember I I kind of looked at this for like five right. or ten minutes in all honesty. Right. Uh, my question is something like um, did they have all the requisite data in the, in the when you looked at it? The data seemed to be complete. I could I could not comment on that. That would take too more much more analysis and okay. time than I had, in all honesty, really. Okay. And and it goes towards talking about their work product and I'm not comfortable with doing that with the amount of time I've had to, okay. to look at. It. And I in all honesty, I don't have time to look at it like that in that depth. Okay. So um, I have a question. Um, so we have a list of sales that have happened, um, but what we're really looking for are comps on how things were established for um, abatements. And so what would you feel is an accurate um, amount of comps to be used in each of those? Uh, you know, is it six, is it two? What, do you, what constitutes a good field of comps for us? Um. As a town, not as a, you know. Yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> That's not an answer I can give you, really, in all honesty. Um, because when you start talking about comparables, um, that's an entirely different world than a mass appraisal. Um, okay. And you're trying to find something, uh, you're trying to find enough information available for something that, informa 
information may not exist for. Okay. All right. So on an individual basis, you may have a $5 million property. I'm going to say something. Hopefully that's ridiculous for West Bath. Let's say $20 million just to make it outside <laughs> the realm of possibilities. Uh, so if you have a $20 million property, you can't say you have to have seven, six sales for that because there aren't. If you have a $150,000 ranch, you might have a multitude of sales. Um, so it's really the data has to be as much as you can and as sufficient as you can make it. Um, the other thing I would caution too is you're looking at two different ways of doing things when you look at a comparable, a, a, an analysis based on comparable sales you're looking on an individual property basis. When you're doing a revaluation such as Parker did, that's a mass appraisal system and the two are treated differently. Um, where a mass appraisal system that you have, you develop the model that gives you your pricing schedules. You then can take that, apply it to the town and look at sales that have occurred and see how well your model performs against those sales. And that's the test of your, your mass appraisal system. Rather than going on an individual basis and doing an appraisal for each property. Well, it's just that we, it, it, I'm concerned that in the abatement process, when someone you know, comes before us and we're tasked to evaluate that scenario, um, do, I, I don't know if we have the information from this report of a list of sales to provide us with comps that um, tabulate the, you know, how do we go about it? From what I discussed with Parker, those are all of the sales that they had available to them when they did the recall. So they contain all of the sales that you would have to use as comparables. To the best of my knowledge. There is one thing too that we talked about when we were doing it. I want to make you aware. It's something that people don't think about. But in the sales that they used, they did apply a time adjustment for those sales. And because the market has been as active as it has been, if you have an older sale to bring it to the current time, you make a time adjustment to that. It's a perfectly acceptable method uh, to do that. And that allows you to utilize sales that might be a little bit older because you can bring them to the current time. That makes sense. And that, you want to make sure that that is what you're using when you look at a sale, that you don't look at it and use an old value that might be out of date. And certainly in the market we've seen and are still seeing to some extent that's current. Probably anything pre-COVID. Yeah, I wouldn't use anything pre-COVID as a as a sale for analysis. The market changed entirely yeah. at that point. So yeah. we all know it. Do you have any questions? Do you think the information that we have with this manual and the comps is enough? information for us to proceed with abatements? Again, I have not had enough time to make that kind of call. Uh, you know, I, that would take a, a, seriously a lot of time and my effort that I, I don't have. Um, and you haven't had a chance even to even look at the book yourself. Um, so, you know, the answers that you find in that might be sufficient to answer your question. So, based on what you saw, um, and I, I wish you had a chance to see this before, you know, did they prepare what we need without it? I know you haven't had a chance to look at it, nor have we. I, I just want to make sure that, because it, you, one, we should have had this finished product before the termination of the payout for starter. That's not you. Um, but we, just so that we can, um, From what for, I saw, for the future, I'm concerned about not this year, next year, but the next eight years to the next rebound. And from what I, from what I saw looking through it, they give you a description of their methodology that they employed. They give you a description.
description of their grading procedure. Um, there's a description in there uh, now that tells you in TRIO there are certain fields within TRIO and that are descriptive fields only. So for instance, if it tells a style and they list it as a cape, mm -hmm. that does not affect the valuation of the property. It's just a description so that you know, yes, this was a cape, it had asphalt shingles, it had X number of things. And they give you a breakdown of what fields do affect value within the system, and those are the fields that you have to pay attention. And that's right on the, I think the first or second page. That first page there. Great. No, that, right that one right there. We'll explain things to you uh, as to what affects value mm -hmm. within the system. Uh, and then they have a grading schedule that they use and they employ uh, that they run through. It tells you pretty much how they did it. They do explain their um, depreciation schedule. Whether or not you agree with what they did as far as grading and depreciation is outside of what I'm going to Well, and that's their methodology. Really using right, methodology. that is what they We're did. We're not going to challenge that element. It would have been nice to have seen that six months ago when we started the process. No more. Well, and that's, that was my suggestion as I think that um, you have a much more useful manual now. Yes, this other one didn't really help. And plus, they did include, was another suggestion, they did outline on a map for you so you could see your neighborhoods that they are applying. And again, it's beyond the scope of what I can do. You know West Bath a lot more than I do, a lot better than I do. Whether or not you agree with what they did as far as neighborhood descriptions and things like that, that's that's a local call call. Because I don't have the time or expert. I don't have the time or local knowledge. Well, but it helps us. <coughs> now, now we can see. Now it. we can see these are the neighborhoods. We didn't have that before. Right. And if we've got the same neighborhood, even though they're different locations, we now can put them like family. Right. And we didn't have that capacity to analyze it one way or the other based upon what right. they had selected. And that, that, that goes to the idea that I think they're much more useful for us now. Do you have any other questions? You're reading it like it's a novel. I, I, it's, I, I, there's a lot in here. There is. I was going from zero to 120. <laughs> So are we going to um, make this available online for people to pull this as a PDF? Or something? It won't be online right away, but it is available to anybody who wants it. Because I think it's going to be curious for people. Should we run into, um, let's say, further confusion? Um, can we call you? I work for the state. I get paid, I get paid by the hour. Um, <laughs> yes, certainly. And what kinds? What kinds of questions are, can you reasonably answer? Given your, as they say on TV, your remit. <laughs> right. Um, I can discuss procedures, and I can discuss. I can't. I can't advise you on individual abatements or anything like that. I'm not going to take. I'm not going to take that part. I could I could answer the procedures and things like that. Um, anything else? I, I don't. I can't foresee what you could ask me. That I can't answer as long as it does not pertain to an individual decision that you're going to make on a debate. Well, it's way better than we had, and I appreciate you getting involved. We need it. <laughs> um, just in the questions. Yeah. Um, then I'll open this to uh, public questions. If you um, kindly um, keep your comments to the things that have been just discussed this evening. And Steve, take it away. Steve Winter. Does Chapter 208 require that a municipal assessor 
do a sales analysis based upon sales in the municipality to the extent they can and justify whatever parameter they put into TRIO. The statute requires an assessor to do sales analysis every year at least. Um, it is not expressly stated that they have to do a sales analysis to justify what they're doing in TRIO, but it does run to the question of due diligence. Um, it's, it's not expressly stated, but it would be an expectation that any land data or anything or any data like that would be based on a sales study. 208 says that all methods uh, will be given to the town and justified. So I would presume that would mean if they have a parameter, you've got to put 1.1 in trio for this, they should have a derivation of how they got to 1.1. Is that correct or not? And again, that speaks to the whether or not the data that they give you is sufficient for you to implement it going forward. Um, and they need to provide you with sufficient information so that you can maintain the system going forward. So if you need to have data to back up the number and where it came from, then that's your decision of whether or not it's sufficient or not as a town. We, don't have, we do not, in Revenue Service, have the oversight capacity to, to, to dictate that. So you're saying our local assessor is responsible to do that? You're the local assessor. Well, well we had, <laughs> yes. that's, that's, that is true. Yes. Um, but we also had an employed one at one time. No, we had an agent, just to be clear. Right. Well, we don't really have the knowledge at this table to do right. that. So that's where we may have an issue. Um, I had a question, do, do other towns, um, do all other towns have um, in-house agents? I'm um, sure that all other towns, yeah, there's no there such are, thing as all other towns. There is, no, there's 482 municipalities in the state of Maine. And everybody, has everybody does it a little bit differently. Um, it runs the gamut from the uh, Selectman Act solely, they do all of the assessing small towns where they can do that. Uh, then there's the agent assessor role, uh, which is probably the predominant model, I would say. Uh, and then you see the sole appointed assessor where the assessor is appointed, and the selectmen at that point kind of give up their oversight responsibilities of the assessor. The assessor is tasked with valuation. And that's it. Um, and that's where you see that in, you can see that in smaller communities, but it would be typical of that as an appoint, as a sole assessor. Um, the town council does not do assessing debate. Because the assessor does. So those are all, those are all of the permutations. So right now, it's up to the three of us to alter TRIO assessments path forward in, in unless you choose to do something differently yes is um we have a question uh, it, it's actually a follow-up question to what you just asked uh, justin hennessy um so the chair i believe is asking that it's typical we had an agent who was a direct employee of the town they weren't an assessing agent by contract mm -hmm. so they were a direct employee are there other municipalities that you're aware of that have that model in me? I personally am not aware of that model. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. There are 482 municipalities. But it would be fair to say it's not common. Agents are usually not employed enough to be a sole employee of the town. Okay. Um, most of them work on a their contract is based on 
so many days, and that depends on the activity within the town. And all of those things, you know, some places it's one day a week, some places it's one day a month, some places it's, it's once in April and the day they commit and that's it. So it really depends on the activity and everything, and it goes from one extreme to the other. I'm not saying that you couldn't have an employee do the agent work. I see no reason why not. There's nothing to prevent it. Um, and again, that's a local decision. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. And is it is it appropriate or inappropriate for um, the town in a, in any given town? This one, obviously, but is it appropriate for office staff to make changes to property cards when property changes hands or that sort of thing? The that. There's nothing that says clerical work can't be done by anyone. Mm -hmm. I would really be cautious that nothing is done that would affect value. Um, that really should be done outside of a clerical type of thing. Making a simple, a simple transfer of ownership from one owner to another Again, that's something you're going to have to review as the assessors anyway. Um, but there is nothing that would require, for, for instance, the person to have a CMA to do that type of work. Um, where it runs into problems is I would not, I'd be very cautious that no one in the town office would do a split where there is a, a partial transfer of ownership or something okay. like that. Because that does affect value, and I think valuation really should not be done at that level. It should be either done by an agent, if you so choose, with your supervision, or by yourself. I don't want to be responsible to change the property card, to be frankly honest. <laughs> it's, I think, why What about correcting errors on the property card that would change the value? I'm sorry, can you just state your name? Oh, sorry, order? Dan Wilhite. Yeah. Um, Again, anything that affects value, I would make sure that it stays under the control of the assessors. And that's that's your that's your remit. Can I ask a clarification on sure. that? Sure. Um, the assessors approve an abatement, mm -hmm. and a change needs to be made to the property card and trio. The assessors right now since we don't have an agent, are not going to go into the system and make the changes. Um, is it reasonable that clerical staff could make that adjustment under the direction of the assessors so that we could get the property card fixed? Um, is it direction or supervision? <laughs> I guess the question. Yeah, um, again, valuation is really purview of the assessors. Um, and I, that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> so it's a local decision. Probably. It is a local decision. Um, but the value rests at, on, us. on the assessors. Right, there, what I'm saying is they're setting the value during the even, if, even, if you, if you, even if you had an agent that was making the changes in TRIO. Yeah. Still right. Rest with the right. Understood. Understood. Yeah. So. What about if alterations happened to a property card um, that caused a valuation change? There were, like, like, so for example, I gained a bedroom. That I, that was an input error. I didn't gain a bedroom. You'd have to look at whether or not that's a that's a value question or it's a descriptor. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure yeah, out no. if this, it, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Lloyd Johnson. Uh, have they come up with a formula for assessing the various lands, the various types of land, such as deep water frontage, tidal water frontage? Shows where it's located, but I don't, 
I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a deep water mud flat yet. There's, there's one here. Um, that shows locationally. It doesn't show you a value. No, but it does show what the neighborhoods are, so that you can see what, what's considered river tidal, etc. So, um, in theory, it does color coded. We've got land schedule pricing, neighborhood three river tidal line. So if I, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but in theory, it would show that. Um, but I don't know where it shows in the neighborhood. I don't know if it shows if you're deep water and your neighbor is tidal. I don't know how that is designated or or obviously component. You know, so that's where I don't see this in here. I actually don't see. There's there is. I'm not done. Um, the, the, the allocation of the variation in waterfront. I, but I haven't looked at this yet. But I, I have not seen that piece. Um, when you get your copy, um, I think maybe where you need to go is the land schedule pricing with paved roads, neighborhood one, and they give another schedule, land schedule on number two and uh, number three in neighborhood three with river and title one and river and title two so i think maybe you'll find what you need i um, we also have a certificate out put in here for working waterfront which we don't have in the community so i'm not sure um, where this derived from we don't have working waterfront not based on these here we don't have any properties. properties in the program as so, a specific like, current use program. Right. Like, um, and we have six entries here talking about working waterfront that don't really pertain to what's bad. So what I see is River Title One, River Title Two, and River Title Three, but that doesn't tell me if it's deep water title. And there's I, I don't I don't know I I think there was a description in there, but don't hold me to it again. It's a five minute mark. Is there a printed definition? With words. Oh, I'm sorry. I was. Matt, you said when we get our copy, and I heard Christine say earlier that it wouldn't be any time soon that these would be available as a PDF on the web page. No, it's because Carly's taking time off. So oh, Tuesday, Tuesday will be on the website. Tuesday? Tuesday. Thank you. As a public yeah. member, we can't. Available to get to the town office to pick copies up without taking vacation time. Oh, I'd be happy to email it to you. It just won't be online. It was asked if it would be online. I took that to mean the website. I do too, but if it's available for an email, that would be appreciated. Yeah, that, I can certainly do that. Me too. Yeah, we can get a list after the meeting of people that would like it emailed. Right. Just, just a copy. But, uh, having to do with simply changing the bedroom count and whatnot, it's not a mechanical operation. The assessors are still responsible for the value. You, you don't get away with punching the box here and saying, this is your justified value. You are still responsible for, no matter what trio does, you are still responsible for the value. It's not a mechanical push the button, we're done. Yes, Steve. Steve Winter. It's important in any revaluation assessment to have some measure of the accuracy of the assessment. If one does a full sales analysis, one of the parameters that should be developed is the coefficient of dispersion. Heretofore, we have not had any sales analysis I'd be surprised if that parameter is in what they've given us now. Also, as you had mentioned, where the rubber hits the road is if they take the methodology that they have developed, bounce it against the sales, and you look at the difference between the two, one can use that as another example of quality control. I do not know if they have provided that. Certainly here before they have provided nothing. Would you suggest that would be good practice for them to provide that? It is a requirement that an assessor do a sales 
ratio study, which is what you're talking about, yeah. that, that establishes the coefficient of dispersion. Yeah. Um, it, there is a requirement that that be done annually mm -hmm. by the assessor. Um, outside of that, as part of our work on the state valuation, we also do a sales ratio study. I understand. Uh, and we provide that every year to the town. Um, so yeah, if there is no coefficient of dispersion provided, they are deficient? It's part of the minimum assessing standards that are expected. Um, the uh, statute lays out minimum assessing standards. Uh, the ratio of sales to assessed value should be between the range of 70% 115 percent and we call it a quality rating it's, a, it's a, analogous to the coefficient of dispersion there's a slight difference in the formulation um, the quality rating should be no less than 20 so if you're above 20 you're out of out of compliance and that's that coefficient of dispersion for those who don't, don't know um, statistics or don't care to know statistics which I can't blame you for, um, is a measure of equity. And it measures how equitable your assessment is. So Were you I, able to pull that from your analysis? Did you I see did it? I did not look for it. How do we see if we have that? How do we know? Um, this is not West Bath's report. I have been asked me, Parker. Um, you should see something. I printed this out in front of the town that I was going to last night. Um, that is a ratio study. That's what it should look like. You as a town have a ratio study that was done. And it would be data that was prior to your revaluation. So, uh, so we should we, have something that we could pull and compare. You have, you have this. From you. Yeah. Yes, we sent this exact report to you. But we should be able to see yeah. what our figures... I, I will also say, don't use our sales ratio study as the be-all and end-all because we have a di different purpose than the assessor might. And we may throw away sales or not use them. I shouldn't throw away. Say throw away. Not use them in the ratio study because it benefits the town. Um, but if you were doing a ratio study for your purposes of understanding your reval, you would more than likely keep them in the study. Uh, again, we do it mainly because we don't want to overly impact the ratio and therefore that drives your state valuation number and that can impact all of the other things that come from that number. So we're a little bit more cautious on the sales that will include in a ratio study. Should Parker, in its reassessment, have provided a sales ratio page? It would be best practice for anyone doing a reveal to test what they've done by doing a ratio study. Thank you. What do you does the data now presented to you, does it include the land extraction method as part of the data presented? I, I'm not out of looking the book. It's right. land extraction method right. that Piper has now displayed, quantified, and tested in this handout? I don't have Not in the book. They're not in the book. They did provide their sales data as an Excel. And the Excel spreadsheet is now available, correct? Yeah, I can send that out as well. Is that what this is or is it a different one? No, there's a new one. Yeah, well, I don't have it. Different than what we just got. Yes, I just didn't print it out because there were some formatting issues that I need to figure out. So it may or may not include land extraction method of blood. And I, I'm asking Steve because I think it's an unfair question to Christine. Right. It's not I, your background, so I'm not I excluding you. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm limited by the amount of time I had to look at. I, I admit more in the meeting on Friday, so forgive me. 
I thought it might have been discussed, and I'm going to conclude. I did. I did mention specifically that, not. Right. I did mention that the, um, the data that they should provide would help would be helpful if they had the final as town's assessments driven by the sales data, you know, so that that could all be seen. Uh, and again, from what I saw, I, I think that they gave that data on it now. The individual parcels that they may have used to do an extraction on, I didn't see that. None. And the three of us in the back know what your schedule is. We've been incredibly generous with it. Thank you for that. So, uh, and, and just in uh, watching our words, would it be considered good practice to include a description of the land extraction method? A description of the method might be a good thing to describe. What we don't know is it, it gets kind of inside baseball to provide the, the nitty gritty. I understand. Um, and again, that's up to the board if they decide that you need that information from Parker to be comfortable with their work. You can always ask them for that. Um, they seem to. They were very forthcoming when I spoke with them on Friday about providing additional information. I see no reason why you couldn't ask them for more if you need it. Justin? For those that don't work with the state ratio studies on a regular basis, is it fair to say, Steve, that the ones that include West Pass new valuations would not be developed by the state until next spring or summer? Uh, let's see. Your your reval was effective of 2023. Yes. So you will not see our ratio study. Our deadline to complete the work is October. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it won't be that late. I was giving you credit for me. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our our goal always is to finish real early, but then this doesn't seem to work out that way. Um, last year we had. Uh, we had most of our work done in August. Um, and as soon as we complete a town, when we do your re when we do your estate valuation and it has been reviewed by Tony Panette and a couple other people who goes through our whole process, at that point we send you that report that I just had from Shirley. So that comes out to you. In theory, it could come out to you next week, but nobody's been here to do your estate valuation yet. I know that. So um, it, it can, we are working on State Bay of Federation now, and as we do the towns, they send them out. So you could see them early spring, depending on how soon we get to let that quest path. Uh, you do know. it alphabetically? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's split up from, you know, 482 towns west Bay. No, that would be not good. Um, no, it was split up amongst uh, different people. Yeah, and, and, right, and depending on what their responsibilities are, is how quickly. Excuse me. Um, but yes, as soon as we, I don't want to say finalize, because it's not final until November 15th. Um, but as soon as we have performed our preliminary work, we send a report to the town. That's the town's opportunity to ask us for clarifications, make changes, suggested sales they don't think should be in the study, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things, we can do that informally before we deliver the state value, and I'm getting it outside of the scope of this meeting, but we deliver the state valuation, proposed state valuation in October. And that starts the clock ticking on how long you have to formally request a review. All right, that has to be done by November 15th. Board property tax review has until January 15th. Um, but we are perfectly open through the whole time to adjust that state valuation to make changes, corrections if we need to, that type of thing. That's why we send the report out early. Mm -hmm. So to assist us in our process, what would be appropriate training to explain? this to us this is still I, I understand some of it I, I still have not found deep water versus title in here um, on how to move forward with our abatement schedule okay. 
that's the question between you and Parker or any agent that you may choose to avoid or what work you're going to take on yourselves. Um, that really determines how much training you're going to do. I mean, if you determine that you're going to do the work all yourself, you're going to need a greater level of training, certainly. Then if you decide to take on an agent, and then it's just a matter of you agreeing with the value or not the nuts and bolts of how it was done. So. Right. Steve, you have a comment? Steve Winter. I found it unusual that Parker provided such a minimalist submission to the town of West Bath. And now with the little coaching, perhaps they come up with something better. I haven't looked at it, so I cannot uh, evaluate it. But I'm curious, from your perspective, how often what I would judge as very minimalist, very inadequate uh, submission to the town, how often does that poor job occur? I've only been in the role uh, since March, and this is the first time I've been asked to look at a work product like that. Um, so, I have limited experience. Uh, there were other people who did that role, and I was I was separate from it, so I can't. I would, too, wouldn't feel comfortable speaking about gold. Okay, other comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? I, I think that we need to find someone to help us um, short term. We're, we're going to run out of time to address these abatements. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm very That's concerned right. with that. Um, and so we have some very qualified folks in this town that would it be appropriate for them to at least explain what we have before us? Because we're not going to be able to hire an assessing agent between now and then because we have roughly a month, not even three weeks, to address these abatements. That is, um, the, I asked Christine actually what she thought about it. Well, I don't think that's a question for me to answer. Um, thank you for asking me, but I don't think I can make a recommendation. Well, we don't have a, we don't have a, a, an agent and a right. agent to assist us. And I, I think if the board is going to hire or contract with an agent. Um, if you decide to do that, I think that's fine. Um, I agree with you that time is short and it might take a while to find a qualified person. Uh, Steve actually made a comment the other day that if we decide to go with somebody who doesn't know TRIO, it might not go very well. Right? Yes. Um, Trio so has its own so I, I would caution you about just taking any random person that... I wasn't asking about the software so much. Right. It's, it's, it's just that we that want it to be effective. So you hire an agent. Um, you want it to be effective right from the start. I'm not talking about hiring anyone. Like, like not coming in and doing this. I'm saying, you know, we have... And I, I guess, what, what is this board's position? Um, you've got three qualified folks that live in West Bath that are, have, um, not done speaking, heavily engaged in this atmosphere to school us a little bit on what we've been presented so that we can address the current abatements in a timely fashion to meet the deadline that we need to meet as a town. Um, I think that's a terrific opportunity for us to get um, the crib notes on how to move forward to address our community. And that's why I want to hear what everyone else at this table thinks. Um, I think that it is not on the agenda and that that is a question that needs to be on an agenda and voted on at a public meeting. Well, the funny thing is, is we have three weeks to address until February 29th and then we've missed the mark on behalf of what we are responsible to this community. So. Um, sometimes agenda items need to be discussed without being formally proposed because it's all related to the assessing workshop. So I think it actually is a relevant, a relevant question that we can talk about tonight. Can I ask for clarification? 
I'm not sure I understood what you were asking, Suzanne. Are you asking specific to abatements? I'm asking, can someone assist us in the, Understanding the, the cliff notes to this? So that for the next three weeks that we have our obligation as the assessors, that we can work through the abatements. Because there's some things in here that I think I get, but I want to clarify that with someone who absolutely knows it before we start making decisions as a board. Sure. My concern is Parker really is the only one that can do this. They put this book out. They wrote it. And I think we need to ask them, again, from the very first day, not being able to meet with Parker has been the problem. We can't figure out what they did. We can't, we still don't have title law. We don't yet. have title in here. It's not in here. So we're still at the same place we were day one. Parker needs to meet with us and answer our questions. They do. But if they're not going to, they refuse before. Maybe they've re rethought that now. But we don't have a complete tool yet to complete what we've asked for. And that's very disturbing. I don't see title, the different, the, I don't see the gradient um, for waterfront. And I looked through that three times. I don't see it. I do see that we have working waterfront in there, but we actually don't have it as a community. So I, I don't know what the answer to that is. And yes, if I look at this, I would assume he's grading them all the same. But you can't, it, it, right, there is, there is a huge difference in waterfront for anyone who has paid tax on it. Um, I, I, I'm disturbed with what we have here and it doesn't provide what we're looking for, to be frankly honest. It's better, but it's not complete. And I think the neighborhoods also, I would like more description on the neighborhoods. I think that's very basic and really doesn't cover the neighborhoods. So I guess, Christy, do you think you can coerce them to come back? <laughs> um, possibly. I will certainly try. Because we, I mean, this we should have had this eight months ago um, before they received their final payment, but there's, there's stuff that's still missing in here that we, and I'm concerned, we, we are two and a half weeks out from deadline. I'm, we, we, we owe this to the community. I'm obligated, as these two are as well. And, and we're falling short of that obligation as the, the board of assessors. Can you talk to um, Jessica to see if she can meet with us? Yes, I will talk to her. And I just want to say that they're still planning on going through the abatements, but they feel like at this point they're in a holding pattern. Um, we are too. Because they're not sure what this board wants from them. We want information. And Jess said it when we met on Friday. She said, yeah, we're with you for a year and we're still planning on going through all the abatements. Um, but they don't understand how the board is dealing with their recommendations for abatements. Well, because we, here's, here's how I think we're dealing with it. So, so Parker Appraisal puts their estimation of abatement before us and that it's up to us to determine whether we feel it's accurate or not. And we've seen all, of the, and I, I, from what I've seen and heard in the community, people are concerned with the waterfront in particular on, on this, just a basic classification. And we've removed tidal and deep water um, variations on, on value. And so we need to know what that is. So if someone comes in and has had tidal for 37 years and now has not seen the acquire deep water, um, we need to figure out if that's accurate or not, and if it's not accurate, how do we adjust the value? And we don't have that in here to do. And it could be as simple as he's got three different, three, four, and five for title. It's title three. But what is it? Right. It's four deep water. I mean, maybe he's got an explanation, but we don't have. It's great. It's hard to find. So I think you're supposed to compare these numbers with these numbers. Right, and so we do that, that, but it's just. But again, you've got. 
title, title, title. It doesn't tell us whether it's five, nine, just says neighborhood five. Is it deep water? Is it mud flats? Yeah. In addition to that which you are seeing in print in front of you, and I've not yet seen it. But the individual working within that software, there are many other options that one must be aware of how to design the keystrokes okay. that I've written manuals. I can promise you, you can't put all of that into a written manual with the variation internal to the software that you must know intrinsically to combine to come out with the final result and then to double check it. Straight face test. So thank you for letting me make that statement. If I took that and labored with it, I and I am good and I am a trio expert and I am respected for being a highly competent assessor and appraiser. I couldn't take anyone's manual and pull it together that readily. So thank you for letting me explain. Well, and that's where, you know, if we're going to move forward in a timely fashion, you know, and, and, and I don't know if these are, where it, would it be appropriate to request her volunteering for an hour? If we can't get Parker in here to address this, is it appropriate to seek assistance from our community to explain some of this to us in, in the translation, so that we can, you know, it, maybe it is in there, and you and I don't see it, right. and, but I don't know that, and so, and I, and, and I want, I want to keep our commitment to the deadline of February 29th, if that, if we can, to make this truly um, successful for our community and, and get us moving forward, and I don't know if we have what we need here to do that or not. Well, I think that if we um, take more than an hour to study it, that would help. Um, but I need someone to study it with me. I need, I, I, need the, I need to be schooled by someone who knows more than I do on what I'm seeing here. And, and none of us at this table have that capacity to answer the question. You probably do, I take that back. But that can answer that question. Well, I would suggest that we start with Jess. I yep. think contact yeah. her tomorrow. Time-wise, yeah. if she can do it. But yeah. again, it's, today's the 8th. We have 11 days. She was extraordinarily responsive. Mm -hmm. I don't last 11 days. She was responsive at our last request, and I don't see any reason why she would be eager to be responsive to this. And to me, it's better to stay with the people who already know what they've done, and that's the way to expedite this process. Not only, I mean, it's not only the commitment that we have to the people of West Bath, it's also the quick commitment we have to the budget. This costs the town money and interest payments on abatements that we owe people. My apologies, it's 21 days, not 11. Okay, thank you. I was having a brain cramp. No, I had to bring around this date. Let me do the math. And if they start looking again at the abatement requests, then we have a chance to get this, this taken care well, of. They, they haven't even seen them yet. We haven't sent them to them. We need to send them to them, for starters. Have they, you haven't submitted them, correct? I, I have not. I have been waiting for direction from the board to see if you want them to continue to review the abatement. We need because them to. They felt like they, the, the town didn't want to work with them. So they felt like they were kind of in a holding pattern. I don't think that's true, and I think they need to review each and every one of them to expedite. Absolutely. We've never said that we want to work with them. We, we wanted them to answer questions. I think that's a misinterpretation on their part. We've not been given the opportunity to connect with them. We need, I, we need, so I guess if you're looking for the approval, I, I suggest, I move that we authorize Christine to move forward um, with all these abatements. I'm surprised that we haven't um, presented to Parker and asked them to expedite this. We can make that 
uh, an assessment. It's not, it's not on the agenda. It's part of the assessment process, Madeline. I don't want to take another week to, to, to delay this. When we're talking, the agenda here was to talk about park appraisal and the assessment. I think that's a, a viable question and a motion that can happen at this meeting to move us forward in the 21-day countdown before we fail. So again, I'm going to try it again. I move that we authorize Christine to present all of the abatement requests to park appraisal. You were in the middle of saying something. I'd like to hear what you were going to say. I was saying we can, if the three of us agree that Christine should go ahead, we can do that without, without violating our commitment for open agendas. Town business, to me, is not an open agenda item. It's a process that should have been done weeks ago. That's not a, we don't talk about process. Or do we just all agree? We can, we can agree that that's what, what we're asking Christine to do. That's enough for me. Okay. And we all agree? I, we should, yeah. I, I don't think we should stall anymore. And then the, 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 the request we just are making to Christine to have the review resume. Expedited, please. In the most timely manner. And also the request is that um, she would come and meet with us. Yes. Does that need we'll to be a workshop like this? Yes. Yeah. If you're all together, it needs to be a public right. workshop, right? Mike? I'm not hearing the solution to the communication problem. I mean, the numbers are one thing, but I'm not hearing the initial plan was for them to meet with people before the assessment and discuss what people's questions were and explain what Parker appraisal was saying. I heard multiple, multiple people say, I never got an answer. If you repeat the pattern of mailing it away, the people will not get their answer. Most assessment questions do not become an abatement. They become an answer and an explanation. If you don't do that piece, you're just going to continue the misery this town has been doing for seven months. Are you suggesting that we, they come here and address individual abatements? What, what are you suggesting? I'm trying to follow what your recommendation is. Remember, they should not be abatements. They should be discussions. They should be answers. They should be what occurred, should have occurred, July. But are you so? But are you saying that we should have them here and people with questions prior to becoming an abatement have the opportunity to ask them face to face prior to filing an abatement? And if it ends up in abatement, they file it. Or if it's just a question, it's resolved. I'm trying to. I'm trying to follow what. That's what I think you're saying, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. You have to undo the history. Yes. What should have occurred in July was answers. And what didn't occur in July was answers. And now you have abatements. You can give people in a number which they probably won't like because they don't know why they got that answer. Or you can give them a number they don't like with an explanation yes. which probably will make them happy. Make them comfortable. Not happy. Comfortable perhaps. We're talking taxes. Nobody's happy about taxes. Yeah. Oh, I do this daily, and people are comfortable. This is this is. So I guess we, I, we may not be happy, but we can be comfortable that we have had an, an accurate assessment. So Christine, does that seem like that's a reasonable request for you to pose to them that we have? And I'll take a full day off from work, but I need to plan for it. So that we have, it. but I, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna put this process together, what have them come in and ask the questions, so that they can resolve their question, or then say, okay, I need an abatement. Is that well? If we already have 
abatements that were filed, can they just go away? I mean, is that what was what no. was being suggested? I think no. the people that had filed. I'm, I'm not following so, the So there's two, there's two. I think there's two things here, Christine. You want okay. you want me to give our? I think there's 31 open abatements right now. I think that's accurate or not close to it. Take those 31 abatements, expedite them over to Parker Appraisal, have them evaluate them as soon as possible. That makes sense. Then I'd like to see, and I, if I'm following what you're saying, anyone who has other questions that were unable to schedule a time with Parker in July to address those questions to see whether they needed an abatement or not, have a, have a chance to do that, because they still have a chance to file an abatement. We, there's, there's a lot of unanswered questions out there. Part of it is, what's the waterfront breakdown? So that's... Uh, do you, does that, are you following what I'm saying? I'm following what you're saying. And I can ask them anything the, bo the board wants me to ask them. But I can't control whether or not they agree to it. Right. Just as a note, contractually, Parker was required to provide five days of discussions. They provided part of three. Yeah. But so there is still a surplus that you could contractually perhaps Redeem. ask for. Can redeem those obligations. Can we um, can we ask? Just you see, that combine the process. <coughs> if they're applying for an abatement, I'm sorry, you need to. Richard Thank you. If they're applying for an abatement, you would want your assessor to come to your board and explain to them how they arrived at that assessment. That, in effect, is giving the information you're talking about to the taxpayer who wants to know why they got this assessment. Once the assessor has explained the method to the taxpayer, they could then have the option to either withdraw their request or proceed. You would have the information as well as them to make your decision. You've combined the two processes. That's exactly what the Board of Assessment Review is going to want to happen if they proceed to go beyond a denial by you guys. We're going to want you to explain to us how you arrived at your decision. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree and I believed I asked for this quite a while ago and the answer was Parker didn't want to do that. I think they will be well, the, the problem is, is we have 21 days to persuade and complete the process. And, and so I don't have, so I guess while we're all still in this room, what's our plan B? If Parker won't do it, what do we do next? Well, I think number one, we need to ask him, or Jess, or whoever it is, because I don't think we should be deciding abatements without them sitting here with us telling them why I agree. arrived at that decision. That's the way we always did it with Ron. Right. So I don't know why we're doing it differently now. I agree. I completely agree with that. We need to have someone here that is in the chain of knowledge right. to assist in that decision. Um, I'm not comfortable doing it. I don't think we have all of the information actually here to even do it. Um, and so I don't know, you know, you know, instead of them, you know, can they look at the, at the abatements and then come here and I'll say present them like Ron used to, to us, with clarity on the, on the request, with the taxpayer present. I will ask. I think that's the only way to really do an abatement. At this point? At any point. Yep. Well, we're, we're, you know, hopefully we'll have an assessing agent path forward to help us with that, which is on, we put that as a schedule item. Um, Attempt to help? Many of the questions are, what is Riverfront, what is this, a simple Definition: the Rosetta Stone of how you read the map. Get that and get it out to the people so that they can at least come in with some clue for what everybody is talking about. Because right now, that's the explanation of what is one, two, and three, four types of waterfront and what it means. It's going to take away a big pile of the questions. You may not make everybody happy, but at least you're not debating about what a definition is. And you should 
And then you, you can talk to anybody forever, but if you don't have that, you're not going to reach the solution. So, so in, in taking that a little bit further, because you have assessing knowledge. So if they said, um, this is tidal waterfront. So and I say hypothetically, is deep water a one? And then it's tidal a 0.5 or whatever that figure happens to be in the value. So how, I mean, because so, we don't know if, if it's come in it's and it been graded as deep water to us. What then, it, it, if it becomes a change in value, do we, t there's not a way for us to tell them that evening, your value is now reduced by $1,700 or whatever that is. Is it deep water if you have navigable water for four hours a day? Is it deep water if you have it for 12 hours a day? Are you looking 300 feet out at low tide or are you looking 20 feet out at low tide? They had an idea mm -hmm. and if they didn't, God help us. Just as a note, I talked to each of the three contract assessors when they were here during their discussion period and asked for those definitions. Each of them said, we'll get back to you, and of course they never did. Bob finally made the statement that uh, all of West Bath is uh, titled. And actually that appears to be what they have done. And I agree that many of these things need definitions. People will be comfortable if they can get definitions. but. It's a hard thing to do, but it hasn't been provided. Yes, Steve? And it's a hypothetical. If the board finds that Parker appraisal is not sufficiently cooperative, is the only alternative a suit for noncompliance with state Law paragraph 208 and non-compliance with the signed contract. I would um, remember a few days ago when Mark Bauer was here and he cautioned about any statements at this point about litigation and it certainly seems like we should listen to Mark Bauer on that bit of advice. Let's see what the next three weeks bring. Yes. And that'll give us our next steps. Do you know what our next steps are? Yes. Okay. Yes, after okay. a little clarification, I, I understand. Yes. We'll get there. We just talk a lot sometimes. But yeah. Are there other comments, questions that can be addressed this evening? Thank Mr. Sullivan. Graciously thank Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> very, very, very much for being here. And we're going to get you a parking space out back. No, that's, that's <laughs> absolutely not necessary. <laughs> Nor do you want to use it. How about, how about up front? Uh, I'll come and visit on that. Uh, thank you. My, thank you. My wife and daughter love camping in Pittsburgh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it didn't walk away two weeks ago. Uh, well, and you're you're everybody. Hmm? Anything down there? Uh, they were down to the next door. Move to the chair. Second. Can you stand at the... No, move to the chair. All in favor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>